Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So the, uh, this is the last video from module one where I've covered most of the concepts with respect to the latest video syllabus provided for this subject, digital communication. So this is the video where uh, I'm going to be covering one more important question with respect to the final exam point of view where they would be asking that is related to the correlation receiver as well as matched filter receiver. Okay. So these two are basically interrelated to each other. But if you understand one thing that is this correlation receiver, if you understand, then easily its inverse is the, the inverse procedure is called as the matched filter receiver. Okay. Where the filters are going to be coming into the picture with respect to the whatever the encoder and detector circuits we get through this receiver circuit. Okay. So based on that, we need to be knowing first the correlation receiver. Okay. So yeah, let us uh, get to the concept of correlation receiver now. Correlation receiver, the optimum receiver for the AWGN channel, that is the additive white Gaussian noise channel, okay, where the noise uh, is, plays a very important role, okay, that interference of noise with respect to different parameters such as detector, maximum likelihood decoder circuits and all for transmission and reception of signals would be dealt with this with this kind of optimum receiver called as correlation receiver okay so the optimum receiver for an awgn channel and for the case when the transmitted signals s1 of t s2 of t up to sm of t are equally likely is called a correlation receiver it consists of two subsystems which are uh, mentioned here okay that is one is called as detector in the figure 1.16a or it is also called as demodulator and the second figure is called as maximum likelihood decoder okay signal transmission decoder or likelihood decoder means for each signal the decoding is taking place and with respect to that the output is produced and that is getting estimated to one particular value okay so first the detector circuit you see here detector circuit it consists of m correlators okay supplied with a set of orthonormal basis functions phi 1 of t phi 2 of t up to phi n, phi n of t you could see in this figure there are m correlators which is kept here okay the m connections and these are all are the detector circuits here with respect to their orthonormal basis functions given as phi 1 of t phi 2 of t and it goes on up to n number of basis functions phi n of t okay for a single input x of t okay so these functions are generated locally this bank of correlators operates on the received signal x of t as mentioned here for this signal it is getting operated where t would be varying from uh, 0 to capital T to produce the observation vector. Okay, Its main task is to produce the observation vector for each set of orthonormal basis functions. Okay, For phi 1 of t, uh, the observation vector produced is x1. For, for phi 2 of t, it is x2. And for phi n of t, it is xn. Okay, So its main task is to be dealing with the observation vector. So this is all about the detector circuit. Now next is the maximum likelihood decoder. It operates on the observation vector x, okay, based on whatever the observation vector is formed. It operates on that to produce an estimate m, m vector of the transmitted signal m i, where i varies from uh, 1 to m in such a way that the average probability of symbol error is minimized, okay. So that's why you see here this observation vector is getting channelized in this inner product accumulator where the uh, signals are getting uh, symbols are getting transmitted with respect to that the output is produced that is half of the energy signals that is half e1 half e2 and half em that is getting estimated to the transmitted signal m cap here okay so this is the complete decoder circuit which is taking place in this inner circuit okay so in accordance with the maximum likelihood decision rule the decoder multiplies the n elements of the observation vector x by the corresponding n elements of the each m signal vectors which is given by s1 s2 up to sm okay then the resulting products are successively summed in accumulators to form the corresponding set of inner products okay so these inner products are given in such a way you see here whatever the processing which is taking place with respect to the symbol and the accumulator the inner products formed with respect to the symbols are given like this that is x transpose x1 x transpose s2 and it goes on up to x transpose S sm okay so these all are the inner product terms okay where they are given in, in generally they are mentioned as x transpose sk where k varies from 1 to m okay 
then the inner products are connected with the transmitted signal energies okay so these inner products formed with respect to the inner product ca calculator that is the circuit of the accumulator with respect to the symbols so that is getting corrected with respect to the energy signals okay so these are the energy signals formed half e1 half e2 half em okay finally the largest one in the resulting set of numbers is selected and an appropriate decision on the transmitted message is made okay so with respect to these signals formed whatever has, has the high, largest value that would be getting selected here so that's why this block is kept here that is for select largest amongst all these energy signals and that would be estimated as uh, that is that would be rounded off to this vector m vector okay and made based on that the appropriate decision is transmitted and the message is getting received okay so this is all about the correlation receiver circuit so if they ask this question these things these points you need to be mentioning it now the next part is about matched filter receiver okay what do you mean by this circuit let us see now so now the detector part in uh, previous section involves a set of correlators alternatively we may use a different but equivalent structure in place of the correlators okay so this matched filter receiver what it does is whatever the output produced with respect to the estimation which is done through the correlation circuit that would be getting filtered in such a way that the signal would be of the purest form okay so that's why this detector part in the previous section which we have used involves a set of correlators okay so those set of correlators are then uh, given through the LTI filter that is uh, they have mentioned it here you see here consider a linear time invariant filter with impulse response hj of t with the received signal x of t operating as input the resulting filter output is defined by the convolution integral that convolution integral is given by yj of t so that is uh, defined as yj of t is equal to integration from minus infinity to infinity why the limits are varies from minus infinity to infinity because we don't have the stable proper value because the signal in the correlation receiver varies from 1 to m right so that's why the signal is not stable so that's why the limits should be from minus infinity to infinity x of tau hj of t minus tau d tau okay so this is the convolution integral we evaluate this integral over the duration of the transmitted symbol namely t where uh, t which varies from 0 to capital t we may replace the variable tau by t and go on to write this equation as yj of t is equal to capital t okay that is equal to integration from 0 to t now now the limits change from 0 to t because we are using the set of time period where for this capital t for the transmitted symbol it varies from 0 to t so that's why the integrals get changed x of t hj of t minus t dt okay so now they have replaced tau by t and rewritten re this equation so name this as equation 1 Consider next a detector based on the bank of correlators. That is the output of the jth correlator is defined by xj. So that xj term is given as xj is equal to integration from 0 to t, x of t, phi j of t, dt. Okay, so this you name it as equation 2. Now for yj of t in the previous equation which you have written, that you should be equating it to x of j. Then we choose hj of t minus t is equal to phi j of t for t varying from 0 to t and j would be equal to varying from 1 to m okay so equivalently we may express the condition imposed on the desired impulse response of the filter as hj of t okay so that's why with respect to these parameters we would be getting the impulse response condition in a desired manner hj of t that is equal to phi j of t minus t for the limits from 0 to t and j varying from 1 to m okay so that's why this final equation would be of the matched filter receiver with respect to the desired impulse response generated and it is getting filtered up okay so now we may state the above equation as given a pulse signal phi of t occupying the interval from 0 to capital t in a linear time invariant filter that is lti filter is said to be matched to the signal phi of t if its impulse response h of t satisfies this condition okay so in order to be getting the signal to be in a matched state this condition whatever is written previously that should be satisfied that is h of t is equal to phi of capital t minus small t where t varies from 0 to capital t so these kind of time invariant filters are called as matched filters okay correspondingly an optimum receiver using matched filters in place of correlators 
is called as a matched filter receiver such a receiver is depicted in this figure so now again the received signal whatever is generated x of t that is getting going through this matched filter receiver equations whatever it is written that is phi of t minus t so those uh, set of equations are written and they are getting passed through these observation vectors to get the sample and the final observation vector which is getting estimated here so this is the complete detector circuit of this matched filter receiver okay so you need to be noting this circuit down very important so yeah this is all about the matched filter receiver circuit guys and along with that the correlation receiver circuit I hope you understood something. These notes I am going to be putting in this video's description. Just go read these notes and uh, write, uh, make a note of these points, okay? Because these are very important uh, questions. So there are highly chances that they might be asking these stuffs, okay? So yeah, that's all for this video, guys. Thank you.